If you like this video, please click like, uh, share it and subscribe. The button's down there somewhere. Are you doing all right? So this week, I'm gonna do a post about cue action. Now, I know I talk a lot about people, how people are sort of too obsessed with cue action. There's a lot of in some information out there on the internet and by being teached. Or whatever. Um, how you should do this and you shouldn't do that. Obviously, you need to get something you can repeat. It's very important that it repeats. But how you do that is, you know, really irrelevant. You've just got to be able to repeat. And if you think about the cue action, it's getting the Q-tip to move backwards and forwards like that. That's it. If you can, how you, if you can create that consistent backwards and forwards motion, even if it's not exactly straight, you can play this game to a, a decent, a very high level, right? But my, you want to be concerned where you're pointing the Q, basically. But on one of my posts, I talk about the, the bare, the sort of basics about how to form a cue action. One of those basics is that you get the cue touching your chest, which again, I'm not one for rules, but that is one of them, to be fair. And people are unsure how much pressure you put on the chest. This will hopefully help. Right, so here it goes. We know with your setup, we need the cue to be on your chest chin if possible but if you can't get down there definitely on your chest now the reason that is is so that you can cue more consistently otherwise it's really tough to do that because if you've not got that sort of anchor point there um it's very easy to go like that so when you when you're actually hitting the ball it's so easy to sort of not get your tip to where you want it to go especially under pressure as well but really really tough to do that so if you're trying to be consistent it is tough, that is virtually impossible. And when it comes to having your cue on your chest, all the player, or anybody that's any good does it, so it's probably worth trying it. So there you go. So because I've got my cue on my chest now, and using my chin as well I am, like it's so easy, it's a lot easier for me to cue more consistently and get my tip which I want it to be. But how hard on the chest does it have to be? Well, I still I still see people, now that spectrum's quite wide to be fair, uh, but I still do see people, even though they've got it on the chest, it's not that, it's only brushing. So if I just brush it on my chest, look, I can still, I can still sort of move it, right? And like I say there, look, it's only brushing my chest there. I can still move it left and right, which obviously, again, I might not be consistently coming through to that point where I need to do. So as a rule, and you know I'm not one for rules, I would say that, the, pr the amount of pressure you have to do on your chest is just enough so it moves your t-shirt or waistcoat, whatever, right? If you look at a lot of the professionals when they're um, interviewed, uh, you'll see that the, the waistcoat's usually a bit shiny there. That's because they've got the cue rubbing on, on the chest. Like I say, some pros have it, you know, tighter and closer than others, but generally it will have enough pressure to move the t-shirt or, or sort of rub it and create that so if i set up there how i should as you'll see look i would say me personally that's my that's what i how sort of pressure how much pressure i have there look you see my t-shirt's moving and then i basically follow through to that point where it's touching on my chest and then now I don't even think about it all I'm thinking about is aiming and then basically finish in there and you can see my, my t-shirt just moving like that so I'll try that once again because with all this this cueing you've got to do it as a habit and you've got to obviously repeat dog with a bone but eventually you'll get to a point where you're not really thinking about your cue actually you're not really thinking about that pressure it's just a feeling running in the background because as soon as it goes to the front of your mind, your, 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 your cueing, you've gone because you're not concentrating on your aiming then. So you've got to practice it, obviously, at the start, if you're thinking about it, you're a circle of death in. But eventually you'll just sort of learn what it feels like. You'll know what pressure is, you know where it is on your chest, you know where your hand's going to finish, and then you can just play. And you'll get to the point where it'll, you'll only actually notice your cue action if you don't do it like you normally do. So it'll feel a bit weird. And that's when you know you're sort of getting somewhere and creating that consistency. 
That's why I always say, if you are chopping and changing all the time, you've got no chance because it's, you can't repeat it because you don't know what a good fit it feels like. Uh, so in order to get that sort of comfortable, repeatable cue action, it's got to be something you're repeating all the time. Like this. So like I say, I'll get down and you can see my t-shirt's always moving, look. Look, I'm making a few more waggles here just to show you. But then when it comes to hitting, I'll, I'll hit there. And then I can do what I like. So have a little play around, try. The firmer the better, really. Not too firm, obviously. But like I say, if your t-shirt's moving, I think that's a good sort of rule to live by. Have a crack. So there you go. Um, I think just to get your t-shirt moving, that's enough. It's enough pressure to sort of keep you stable. Obviously, if you don't move, your cue's not going anywhere. And it's a little bit of a guide, a little bit of a crutch to lean on to help you be able to hit the, hit the white ball where you, where you want to. Um, so give it a try. Uh, see how we get on. Please comment below if you either agree or disagree. Be nice. We're all friends here. I've had some very prickly comments recently and emails, uh, which is really funny. But um, see you soon.